This week on Behind the Edge, we're talking about a new offering from Ferrum Forge Knifeworks. This knife right here is called the Mini Archbishop, and man, we have a lot to talk about. Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Brent, aka Backpack B, back at it again with another episode of Behind the Edge. Super amped about this one, but before we get into all that, consider stabbing that subscribe button if you're new here. It really helps out the channel, and we're growing pretty fast. We're almost to 200 subscribers, so thank you very much. Uh, so let's get into it. Welcome to Behind the Edge. Let's go! <laughs> And there she is. What an exciting knife from Ferrum Forge. A stellar follow-up to one of their most successful knives, the Archbishop. The Mini Archbishop boasts a simple, bold, and confident design that offers a piece of the iconic Ferrum Forge design ethos at a fraction of the cost. A compact design with a blade that's under three inches makes the Archbishop a great EDC option. Let's break it on down. Ferrum Forge Knifeworks was founded in 2010. Over the past decade, brothers Elliot and Chris Williamson have grown the company substantially, collaborating with companies such as Wee Knives, Mass Drop, and Gavco Knives. The Mini Archbishop is the latest addition to the Ferrum Forge Pro series. Weighing in at just 2.42 ounces, it has a handle length of 3.625 inches, it has a handle width of 1 inch, and a handle thickness of 0.39 inches. It has a blade length of 2.75 inches, a blade width of 1 inch, and a blade thickness of 0.12 inches, giving it an overall length of 6.3 inches. The Mini Archbishop features a flat ground drop point blade, 9 CR18 MOV steel, G10 overlays with stainless steel liners, a recessed deep carry pocket clip, a liner lock, and flipper tab and thumb hole deployment. Let's take a closer look. Starting on the show side, you can see the textured G10 handle scales that are purposefully a tiny bit smaller than the steel liners. Visually, this creates a border that frames the G10 nicely and functionally, it mimics a chamfered edge, which overall helps the ergonomics. Moving on to the spine, we can see the matching G10 backspacer that has some subtle jimping, as well as the flipper tab that also has a bit of jimping. Moving on to the lock side of the knife, here you can see the deep carry pocket clip that's recessed into the G10. Also, you can see the pivot hardware here is a T8. Let's check out the centering, and that is a strike right down the middle, love to see it. And on to the best part, the thwack test, and wow, the blade rockets to the open position. The detent of this knife is super dialed in, not too weak or not strong, and the action feels great. I love the large thumb hole and pivot hardware with the Ferrum Forge logo engraved into it. And here you can see the piece in all its glory. I love the silhouette of this knife. Moving to the lock side, you can see the matching stone wash of the blade and the pocket clip, that's a great detail. Let's check out that action again. Whoa. Yeah, it came super dialed in right out of the box. The design feels fast and ergonomic. There's just a lot going on here that's great. One more time for Thwack's sake. Great action here. All right, time for some size comparisons. Here it is next to the SOG Terminus XR in Crimson G10 and D2 Steel. These both have very similar blade length, but the SOG Terminus XR has a much longer handle than the Mini Archbishop. Next up is the Little Native from Spyderco and CPM S30V. They are similar in size, but the Mini Archbishop is a tad longer, and they both have forward finger choils, so that's cool. Alright, next up is the Voxnase Design CRKT Pete, a budget offering from Columbia River Knife and Tool. This is a bit smaller than the Mini Archbishop, but the handle is larger. Next up, you know I had to throw a Tucson in there. This is the TS-179 Perfecto, designed by Tepe Designs. They are similar in overall length, but the Perfecto is a much wider knife than the Mini Archbishop. Okay, time for the control knife. I finally got a Delica 4 from Spyderco. You can see the Delica 4 is longer. The Mini Archbishop seems to have a wider blade with more belly than the Delica does. Okay, next up, here it is next to a knife I just picked up. The CJRB Centros, designed by Dylan Mallory. There's a big size difference here, but these knives both have a design language that makes them feel fast. Finally, onto a knife that I am super pumped about. This is the BRS Evolve Eon Integral designed by Elijah Isham. It's an amazing new offering that'll be featured on an upcoming episode of Behind the Edge, so keep an eye out for that. And that's it for size comparisons, moving on. And we made it to the pros, cons, and conclusions, starting with the pros, and there are a ton, so I'm gonna trim the fat and keep it concise. 
First off, the design is amazing. Ferrum Forge has been putting out a lot of great work, and this is no exception. It's safe to say that they've developed an aesthetic that is recognizable in the knife community. But this design language really works for them. The silhouette of this knife is beautiful. It feels simple but sophisticated. The large thumb hole feels sporty and aggressive. The next major pro is the ergonomics, and aside from a small hotspot next to the pocket clip, this piece really feels great in hand. As I mentioned before, the G10 being a tad smaller than the steel liners really helps those sharp edges feel as if they are chamfered. The forward finger choil really helps this smaller knife fit in hand nicely. I love the oversized thumb hole, it's super fidget friendly. The fit and finish of this knife was great out of box. The blade was centered and the detent and action were both dialed in. Ferrum Forge teamed up with Wii Knives to bring this to market, so they have a great history of quality. The stone wash blade and the pocket clip are nicely done. The deep carry pocket clip is recessed into the G10 handle scales, making this knife a joy to carry in pocket. I think that the handle to blade ratio of this piece is amazing. You get a lot of blade for the small package, and thanks to the forward finger choil, the handle feels good in hand and it doesn't feel too small. The next pro is price. These can be picked up on Blade HQ for about $75, but I was able to get it on sale from Ferrum Forge directly for $60. Either price point is great for what you are getting. The quality from Wii Knives and the great design from Ferrum Forge with good budget materials in the G10 and 9CR18 MOV. I think the price is definitely fair. One of my favorite things is when custom knife designers put out production knives with lower price points. Ferrum Forge has been doing just that. I could keep going with pros, but I'm gonna wrap it up with this one. The final pro is size. The Mini Archbishop's blade is under three inches, which makes it legal in a lot of places. It's also just a great all-around EDC size that hides away in your pocket until you need it. All right, on to the cons, and there are little to no cons with this knife, but I do have two nitpicks that might just be my personal preference. First off, I would have loved to see this knife in D2 steel. A lot of people I know prefer 9CR18 MOV, but in my experience, I prefer the D2 from Wii Knives and Civivi. It holds a better edge. The second nitpick is about the hardware used on this knife. I love how the blade and the pocket clip have matching stone wash, but the hardware used on this knife is extremely shiny, and it clashes with the stone wash. I would have loved to see a consistent finish on all the hardware that matched the stone wash better. I feel like it would have made the knife more cohesive in my opinion. And yeah, I know this is a crazy nitpick, so let's move on to my conclusions. So finally, we're at my conclusions. This knife is a great EDC size with a blade that's under three inches. Its design is top notch. Its build quality is amazing. You're getting a perfect storm of design, quality, and functionality all in a sub $100 knife. This piece, in my opinion, is an absolute home run. The pros greatly outweigh the cons. You should pick one up for yourself. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite knives of the year so far. Wow, so that was a deep dive. And if you're here, I'm impressed. That's a lot of knife content to consume. Well done. So uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Back, back, be out. Deuces, peace.